All right, so we wanted to do a little lab on. Oh, that's neat. Nice little, nice little effect of <coughs> Visual Studio 2022. Uh, we're gonna do a little like lab of practice uh, using templates and inheritance. Uh, CSI 02, spring 2024. This is module two. So just for a little notes. Uh, and let, let's, this is a, this is code. Code is based on stuff by Kevin. I want to say his last name is Andrade. So he had a code that he sent me. He was really, I don't know if he came up with it. Or I think he did. Uh, he had an idea for R RPG characters, and so he's got include string, include vector. Uh, of course, our IO stream and our using namespace. He's got template. Uh, two types of templating for struct fighter one, struct fighter two. Uh, and then he's got uh, some functions that go with it. So print fighter stats. He's got a print fighter stats. I'm not sure what the difference is between these two. You got a fight outcome. Looks like each character has base. I'm not sure what base is. We'll have to see when we run it what it is. Name is probably last name, first name, then last name. Uh, w and L, I believe, is win loss. Power, more power. Uh, defense, KO, maybe how hard they hit. That seems like a power thing. Uh, let's go through. At least these look pretty much the same, don't they? Fighter one and fighter two. I see anything. Is there anything different between them? In fact, I think that the, this is identical to this. So we're going to clean that up in a little bit. I was telling Kevin about it. Uh, that's a, we really don't need two. Uh, and I think we only need one of these too. These look like they do the same thing. But let's go down and look below. Let's see what he's got here. He's got a create fighter one, player one, and player two. Okay, so player one, player two are two players. Uh, enter information. Looks like you enter information on the. I don't know what base is. It is a string, though. He's putting it on string and under base. Uh, so I'm not sure what that is. Maybe like red and blue. I don't know. Uh, he's got enter the first name, the last name, the base, uh, the wins, the losses, so maybe their previous records, uh, KO power, their knockout power, their, and that will go under KO, and then wrestling goes under wrestling. So I don't see anything here under power. Or what else did he have up here? Defense. I don't see either of those showing up down here. But is something uh, we could build on? Maybe he's just setting it up. Uh, this says print fighter stats, player one. Versus, I don't know what tail of the tape means. And then there's a print, print fighter stats player two. These two lines are calling the same function. And let's see our templated class. Uh, so he's got fighter stats. This must be fighter one. And templated class fighter two. Oh, this is the print one. 
This takes in the fighter one. This takes in the fighter two. And this doesn't reference the power or base either. Power or defense either. And these are actually doing the same thing, aren't they? Yeah, it, it looks like it. These look like duplicates. What I'm going to do is... The second one actually references 1 to 400 for the KO ability. You're right. The other one doesn't. And I don't know why, because neither of them say 1 to 400. It says 1 to 1,000. Let's see. What, what else is going on down here? Uh, fight outcome adds their KO power and their wrestling power. And then... It says Fighter 1 stats goes up by 400. But Fighter 1 stats and Fighter 2 stats were declared in the, the function. Unless they get sent somewhere, they're not getting, they're not changing anything in the outcome. What else we got here? So who won? So I don't know that we need two. Uh, let's let's first off trim this down. Let's talk about why we template and, and stuff like that. So when we're doing the templating, we should really only be templating things that we're not sure what we're going to use. It feels like wins and losses, that should be an integer already. And I'm going to like comment out one of these and I'm going to edit the code. Uh, these look the same. I don't know. I don't know why there's two different ones. They just take in a different argument. And what I'm going to do is just call it a fighter period. Let's just call this the fighter. Let's clean up the code so it does that deals with that first. I got to change it down below, of course. Uh, that's okay there. And that's okay there like that. Now it's calling the same one, but player one and player two are what they're at. Let's come down and edit the code down below. Make sure this works down here. This doesn't need to say fighter one. That doesn't need to say fighter two. In fact, I don't know what the one to 400 is doing. It doesn't look like it's really doing much. I'm going to comment that out. See if we can still get it to run just the way he wants it. And again, this is something he's playing around with, but like we can make it a little bit better. It confuses me to have fighter two and fighter one like that. I'm going to go player one and player two, put them in the right order. And now, oh, I don't need to change any of that. That'll still work. Does he ever use the stats down here? He does. He adds to the power level here. So I think that's what he's trying to do here. We'll 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 address that in a second. Let's just make everything sure everything's working. Fight outcome, is that what it was called? Void fight outcome. And now we're calling the same function. That'll work. And this didn't need this. This is still going to work. This is this should still work with what he's got. No, it's not. So what's wrong? 
line 32. It says line 32, thing six. 32 is right here. Is that the problem? Labeled differently down. This says player one, player two. I'm gonna go up there and call it player one, player two up here. Is that the problem? Nope. It also doesn't like 132, 138, what's going on down there? Oh, everywhere, I changed this to say player. These all need to say player now too. Let's see, control F, find fighter one and replace with player one. And now we'll find fighter two and replace with player two. I should change it all down there. And I don't think I had it anywhere else up here. I think I already got rid of it. Line 126. I think your one of your things it it just says player instead of player. Yeah, there you go. You're right. It even said it in the the shit, didn't it? All right. Let's just see how it works. We've got David Jones. Uh, I'll be on the blue team. We start off with zero wins, zero losses. Oh, I don't know. Some bitty wrestling at 500. Then we'll pit myself against my TA, my SI. He's going to be on the red team. He's got zero wins and zero losses. Uh, we'll go 800 and we'll go fucking. Uh, 550 here. It says one wins. Power level is 1350. 1350 is 800 plus 550. So this plus 400 is not doing anything unless the wins are higher than the losses. That's interesting. So maybe do like another statement. Right. So I don't know if this is working the way he wanted it to. Uh, so like, are we, should, should we be carrying, comparing player wins? Or maybe should we be doing this? Uh, if player one stats is greater than player two stats. Then I don't even need this. It's only one line. No, it's two lines. Uh, player one 
with W plus plus player two L plus plus. And then we'll do else if player one stats is less than player two stats. Player one losses gets a plus plus. Player two wins gets a plus plus. Now again, right now, we are passing a copy in of these guys. So this isn't gonna edit anything in the main. This will just be here. So if we wanna edit in main, if we want to edit in main, we need to edit this to pass by reference or use pointers. Will you post this code yeah, somewhere I'll, after we're done? I'll definitely copy and paste this and put it in the announcements. I asked Kevin if I could use it and he said, yeah. And now this should tell us I don't know that this is what we want here either. Actually, yeah, it is. If player one stats. So here he was declaring the winner. I'm not sure what he was trying to accomplish with this. They got more power if they already had a high, stronger win rating. But player one stats didn't match anything in the main. So maybe that's a power thing. I think this is a base of what something he's starting to tinker around with and he wants to do more and he doesn't have everything in. Uh, let's go back up here and I'm going to get rid of that. And look at like, what do we got going on here? So he's made a nice, ooh, that's a long one, isn't it? I'm going to do this. That way it shows up on the screen. It should still look the same. I think he wants a lowercase i there. All right, so let's look, let's look at what's going on with our character here. Uh, we want to only use templating for things that should change. I would argue that name and last name are not ever going to change. I base could base could be just a single character. Base could be a number. You might be just, you know, base one, base two. Uh, but your name is generally a string. For this, I would say wins and losses. And I don't care for the W and the L, but that's what he's got. Those should be integers because you never have a decimal win rating. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But you might want a decimal with all these. Uh, you might want them to be integers. So I could see those being up for grab. <coughs> Does that make sense? Like we don't want to, like anything that's not going to, because the way he had it, he had string covering 
base name and last name. And I guess I still could have given base a number and it would just been a string number. Uh, but there's really no need reason to template the names. You're not gonna ever use anything different than a string. There's no reason for a decimal name, anything like that. <coughs> Makes sense. Makes sense, right? And this should still run. Two undeclared identifier in 108. Okay, what's going on down here? How are these unidentified? Let me comment that out. Okay, so it was that. So maybe what's wrong here? This says player one stats and player two stats are integers, but they shouldn't be integers. They should be whatever KO and wrestling are. And KO and wrestling are declared to be T2. So we want to change that. Now they're the same type. And maybe I won't do plus plus. Maybe I'll do equals player one W plus one. Does that fix it? Oh, this is player one capital S. There we go. Okay, that's working. <coughs> so this way we were able to use two different types of things decided right now. We could always decide to make these doubles. And the base and integer. And it should compile just the same. It's going to work just fine. Uh, so I'll go back to call this a string. Just click undo. 
All right, so that's how kind of how the templating works. Don't need that extra one right there. <laughs> and if we think there's gonna be three different things that we wanna to group together, uh, like we're deciding T or power and defense are all the same thing, gonna be the same type as KO in wrestling. Depending on what they're being used for, they could be. Uh, or we have the option of making, uh, I'll just comment on it here. If power and defense do something different, maybe make them a T3. But we don't have that as for now. So template. Uh, if we want to do inheritance, what do we want to build on this? Uh, what, how could we improve a fighter? More training. More training, that would probably increase the stats on KO and wrestling. But what about like, what would we give them a new variable for? Hmm. Special abilities. Okay. Uh, let's call this a warrior and we'll build it off fighter. That's not how inheritance goes. Come over and look at my code. Also not the one I want. That's not it either. Gotta be over here. Let's come over here. Have tense. I said module one. This is module or module two. This is really module one shit. Oh, not the public fighter. I think we're going to need the same shit here. So maybe uh, something that will add to this is uh, skills, probably a string. Maybe skill one, skill two. And maybe we'll, we'll take in that T2 for skill one power, skill two power. Or maybe we'll call it strength because maybe it's a defensive skill and we don't know if it's like a power thing. Maybe just skill one stats. And we should be able to come down here and make a warrior. We could make these both warriors now. And it sh everything should work fine. So 
So why is public not working? These need to be classes. Oh. Click undo, put them back to struct. Oh. And that turned warrior green. There we go. And now warrior's green here. And that's how we would do inheritance. Uh, the only real difference that we need to work look at for inheritance or any of these is right now, this is all done. Everything's done before the main. And as you can see, inheritance can be uh, tricky when you do it. Like here, everything's set. Well, actually, no, the names are set. The prototypes are up here. But the implementations are all down here. And so we got to make sure when you're doing something like that down there, you got to do this. So let's come back over here. But structure, they're all public, so it doesn't matter. Nothing's hidden. Let's see. Those are all methods inside there. We don't have any methods or private stuff. So maybe if we set it to private, that's where shit gets a little more fun. So maybe, I don't even know, I don't, struck may not have private automatically. So this will be like the hidden power the protagonist pulls out of their butt. Yeah, let's hide the skills. Let's do that. Yeah, we can still declare shit as private. I like that. That's some sneaky shit right there. Which means we need... Uh, Get and set methods. So set skill one. Let's see. Uh, set is a void. And it's going to take in a string. And get will return a string. And then we'll do the same with uh, void set two. And we've got void set one stat. And it takes in a T2. And we'll do T2 get one stat void. And copy and paste that for set 
to and get to. So we need to come up with some methods for those. So I'm going to come up here and copy that. Actually, just fucking copy the whole thing. Okay, we have warrior, scoping warrior. I already need, really need what we're doing here. Not warrior scoping warrior. That's that's a constructor. We're not doing the constructor. We are doing the set methods and shit. So warrior set one string. Why is it not like that? Oh. Can I make this a class off of a struct? Can we mix and match? You might be able to. Let me comment that out. See if we can mix and match classes and structures. That's fun. Oops. What am I missing here? I'm not sure why it doesn't like that. Well, listen, W, let's change this to a capital W. Wow, everything got pissed. Why? It said some of the stuff was inaccessible, so maybe like an error with the public and private stuff. I don't know. You're right, that's exactly what it is. Classes are defaulted to private.
doing, we would be doing exactly like this. Why is it giving us some fucking grief? That's not a helpful representation. Is it the boy mixing the templating with it as well? Is that the problem? That's it. What did I call the actual stats up there? I knew something was off. Skill one, skill two.
Get these going, get the get one. Now this will be set. Two stat, a skill two stat set. And now we gotta do our gets. So this is gonna return a T2. And I have void. And it's gonna re say return skill two stats. Return skill one stats. We'll call this two. And I'll do my set one, set two up here with these. And this is returning a string. There we go. And ideally, we should probably make these all private up here. It may not seem like a big deal when you're the only one working on your code. Uh, but if you're working on a giant project and you're sharing shit and you're passing around header files and resource files and shit like that, uh, you may not want people being able to edit everything in your, your shit. For example, if it's a character, uh, you may not want people being able to, like if character had stuff like appearance and shit like that, the artwork and all the rendering for the artwork, uh, you don't want anyone being able to edit that unless they are working on the character creation team. Other than that, no one else needs to be able to act or access or change character appearance. Character appearance people don't need to be able to change stats and shit like that. So they don't need access to any of that. If you go to do an in-game in thing, let's say you're playing a game and <clears throat> level 20, you earn the right to get, go change your appearance. When you go change your appearance, it shouldn't just change your stats with it. That should be turned off. Uh, so maybe making these private would be better. But this is just something to get started here and illustrate that we can do templating with inheritance. Let's just make sure it runs before I start running my mouth. Yeah, there we go. Any questions? Yeah, no. could you, um, oh, I'm sorry, what? Uh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I was, I was, uh, was gone for like 15 minutes. I was watching, uh, taking my dog a bath. Could you just like skim over the code? Yeah. I'm gonna paste yeah. it in the announcement if you want to see it there. Yeah, I know, yeah, I know, I know, I know. I just wanna okay. I just wanna see it just to see how it works. Okay, Here. so uh we got warrior building off a of fighter. Uh -huh. uh, so this is our special skill set, it's all hidden. We've got our accessor methods, uh <clears throat> and the game goes along and you like insert all the player stats. There's not there's a lot of work that still needs to be done. Yeah. Uh, you enter in all the stats for both players and then you just let them fight. Mm -hmm. And they do okay. one fight. Uh, and it determines the outcome right here. Okay. Uh, so he's got his, it's got the print fighter stats here. <clears throat> the fight thing, 
which needs some work still. Uh, we we yeah. made it so the wind thing, and then we made some accessor methods for our warrior subclass. Okay. Cool. Makes sense. Yeah. Now, if you play D and D, do any of you guys play Dungeons and Dragons? Yes, sir. All right. So. In fact, for those of you that don't, let's just go take a look at D&D. &D, uh, let's look at the Paladin. Nice and simple. You're going along. You're level one. Uh, you have some skills at level one. Divine Sense, Lay on Hands. At second level, you get to choose a fighting style. And where is the class feature? The Sacred Oath. When does that come up? Sacred Oath at third level. You choose... This is... Sacred Oath is like a subclass for Paladin. So we might have a Paladin base class... That has all of our everything that goes along with the paladin base class, and then have subclasses for each of the oaths, oath of conquest, oath of devotion, shit like that. And so that way, does that make sense? Yeah. Paladin may not be the best example. Uh, mm -hmm. Wizard's pretty good. So you can kind of think about it like as a tree, right? Like it can branch off in a few different directions. Like it has exactly. like the initial. It's a tree. And at third level, that's where you get your first real branch. And right. so it's like, which branch are you going down? Okay. And like some of the stuff Palins might affect it, but <laughs> I know shit like Wizard, it affects it. Uh depending on which one you pick, it affects the your stats. Flat out affects your stats. So School of Evocation is your fireball class. Uh, if you take Evocation, uh, you gain access to your sculpt sc spells. Works better. You can make safe spots. Uh, wow, it used, to do, it used to change shit more. Does one of them change a lot? Uh, cleric definitely has a big... I'm going to go Cleric. Fuck, I'm playing a Cleric right now, so I know it definitely changes. <laughs> so you picked your domain. What level do you pick your domain at? Is it second or third? Oh, you pick it right away. You pick it at first, first level. But each domain does different shit. So like divine domain. It's gonna doesn't even have spells listed under divine domain. Arcana domain gives you access to different spells. So, like, if you're if you've got a spell list under the base class cleric, and you might even make it boolean to say whether or not the person has it memorized or not, and then if they choose once they choose their domain class, they also add these to those spell lists. So this flat out affects what spells you can cast. So that that would be something like that. Here we would have, you know, cleric, uh, list of level one spells, list of level two spells, kind of long actually. Uh, and then we would get down to the domain, like build a domain off of public cleric, like say the life domain. 
You might probably call it life cleric or something. You don't want to just call it life. That's a little confusing. Uh, but then in here, you only list the new spells and new, new abilities. And that way you don't have to copy and paste all the fucking... You think about all the cleric spells? There's a fucking lot. There's a Shilla. Come back over to clerics. Uh, let's just go to the home page. Game rules, spells, cleric. There is a lot to do. I'm just keep scrolling and copying, pasting that a shitload of fucking times is going to suck ass. But you make it the base class and then the only things that you change are things you add. A lot better. Right? So that's something inheritance is good for when you're making role playing games and shit like that. If characters have subclasses or somewhere along the, the, their leveling, they progress and gain different abilities. But depending how they choose to progress, it's different. Right. Uh, okay. It would. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it would be like a I don't know a, a mage with uh, a a tank's health. Like, that's a possibility. It's not necessarily right. a good one, but yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 Fair enough. And when we start doing linked lists, you'll see how we can make some of the stuff shorter and more accessible and stuff like that. That's later on. Okay. This was just something real simple we could do in an hour. And it's been an hour. Uh, I don't want to keep you guys any more of your time. I think we kind of illustrated inheritance with templating for like a role-playing game okay i'll go ahead and let uh carlos or anyone else if they have any questions and i'll stay a little bit and ask you uh, one more question okay carlos uh no yeah uh, you answered my question oh did i yeah. that i'm fucking cool like that uh anybody else All right. What's your question, Eli? We'll go from there and then I'll close out. Okay. So I'm, uh, I'm doing like this little project thing for FNL and I'm creating my own, like a text, like, text based game. And it's going to have like a cheeky, a cheeky narrator. And, uh, I was I wondering, <laughs> I was wondering, cause the, I want to do it in C++ because it's the it's the language i have the least familiarity in i feel like it, it has like the highest potential for growth what what type of would you recommend i use unity for like if if i decide to include any assets like i don't know like small things like maybe maybe like for a, a text-based game background. you don't need fucking unity unity is a 3d okay. environment that okay, is okay, not okay, a text-based okay. thing okay, okay so if you're interested in doing a text-based game c plus plus works fine I'm normally mm -hmm. at FNL every week. If you're doing it at FNL, I'll sit down with you each day and I'll work with you on it. Bet. Okay. All right. Sound cool, good? Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, sounds good. All right, then we'll work on it tomorrow. Tomorrow's FNL. All right. Okay. All right. See you then. All right. Peace out, guys. Let me, I will, uh,